Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we're discussing If I Were You by Lisa Renee Jones. If I Were You is a big venture off for me from my usual genre choices. It's actually an adult novel. So if you're a youngin, it's not really for you. It has a lot of sexual scenes and it's just, it's not appropriate for youngins. If you're old enough though, the book follows a woman named Sarah McMillan. She's a school teacher. She's 28 years old. She has this friend, Ella, and this friend, Ella, is kind of obsessed with Storage Wars. I've never watched Storage Wars, so I don't know much about it myself, but what I've gathered is that, you know the storage crates that you see in like movies and like, you know, scary places where they like hide human bodies because there's so many storage crates you'll never find them? That, those are storage crates. And when the stuff is left unclaimed, you can buy them and then take that stuff and sell it for a profit. So Ella does that. She buys a storage crate, she gets the stuff, she goes to sell it, but then she's whisked away by her fiance to Paris to so elope. So she gives the storage crate to Sarah McMillan, our main character. She's like, Sarah, you know what? I can't do this right now. You take the stuff, sell it, do whatever you want want with it, keep the profit. It's yours. I'm going to get married. And we don't see her for the rest of the book. Sarah has the storage crate and she starts looking through this person's stuff and she finds all these journals that document this woman's like intense sexual encounters. They're, they're really shady and dangerous. And the man she's having these sexual encounters with is really aggressive and scary. Quite scary. And the journals just end. Like it ends during a passage. Like she's writing and she stops. And Sarah's like, whoa, what the hell happened to this lady? These things that are going with her and this dude seem really dangerous and she starts hypothesizing is this woman dead why is there a whole crate of her stuff in storage she finds out that this woman's name was Rebecca and that she worked at this really nice art gallery Sarah becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to Rebecca so she calls this art gallery up multiple times trying to get a hold of Rebecca and everyone's like Rebecca's not in Rebecca's not in Sarah's sitting here like who well where the hell is she then who knows and she actually decides she's gonna go to this gallery to a show Showing that they're having, attend the showing, and find Rebecca. Just, you know, to settle her nerves. So, like, to see that Rebecca is fine and dandy, and she's just making all this stuff up in her head. It's not a big deal. She goes to the freaking gallery, asks around about Rebecca, and no one's seen her for months. She's been on this extended vacation with her rich, wealthy boyfriend, and they haven't heard from her. They don't know when she's coming back. It's very mysterious. But Sarah didn't just go to this gallery trying to find Rebecca. She actually really loves art. She was an art major in college, and she wanted to work in art, but since she couldn't find a way to make a decent living off of it, she became a school teacher. So she's at this showing, you know, kind of meeting the people who run the gallery and such, and they're looking for someone to replace Rebecca, who was one of the managers at the gallery. Here's art expert Sarah just wandering around, and they end up hiring her to replace Rebecca as a temp until Rebecca comes back. And so she kind of slips into this woman's life that she's stalking through these journals. She's trying to figure out what happened to Rebecca, but along the way she's meeting all these people that must have been in Rebecca's life. You're always kind of questioning the men that she meets. Is this man the guy in the journal? Did this man kill Rebecca? There's kind of two main perspective people that you suspect. And one of them becomes her love interest. It's all very mysterious. This is an erotic thriller, so a lot of it does focus on like this really passionate relationship that she has with one of these men that could be the guy from the journal. What kept me reading was the Rebecca aspect of it though. I thought that was really interesting and that compelled me to go through the book. This is the first book in a series, so it doesn't completely resolve. And it's gonna be a television show on stars, which is really interesting. Myself, like this wasn't my favorite. Personally, I think this genre is just not really my cup of tea. I'm glad I tried it out and gave it a chance, so I kind of have a feel for it, but it's more focused on these like passionate relationships. There's a lot of lust, but there's not a lot of groundwork and cutesy discussion and learning about the characters' lives and what TV shows they like. like. I personally really like reading about nerdy, cutesy dates and having witty, fun dialogue between the two love interests. This is all passion and throwing people against the walls and that's all fine and dandy, but it's so much of the book. And I like there to be a nice balance. All the characters, like the males are really masculine. They're like manly men and they're really dominant. And it kind of made me a little uncomfortable at points because they're really at points demanding and just some people like that. It turns Rebecca on to these guys and I'm just like, oh, stop. You shh. Let her do what she wants. The dudes are really aggressive. It just it was harder for me to relate to this woman because I didn't agree to a lot of the things she found super attractive. And the lack of cutesy, awkward, you know, encounters. 
<laughs> I didn't focus on Rebecca as much as I wanted to focus on Rebecca and this mystery. For me, the book was like a 79, 80%. Like I said, not my cup of tea. I think a lot of people do enjoy this kind of a book. And if it sounds interesting to you, it's a really great time to be picking it up because the author is doing this cool promotion where she's giving away these awesome pens. It's like a paintbrush, but it's a pen. And now I get the significance because, you know, the love interest is an artist. And also, you know, that paintbrush thing. I'll leave all the info on how to acquire this in the doobly-doo. So you can open that up and find it. So that's the end of my non-spoilery section. So bye non-spoiler people. Bye. So if I were you, I had some problems with the writing. It felt really repetitive to me. For a while I'm just like, Sarah, okay, you know what? I get it. Like no one has made you feel this way ever before. Just over and over and over again about Chris. Like, come on, girl. Okay, I heard you. The thing I'm most interested in hearing from you guys is who you think the dude is. It really is kind of pointing to Mark as the guy, but I think that there's a chance it's Chris. Like, I don't trust the dude. I don't know enough about him. We never sit down. I was so excited after, you know, they had sags and then they're like, oh, let's have pizza and sit down. I'm like, yay, let's have pizza. Let's talk. Let's just like discuss our lives. Let's play Monopoly. Let me fun. Let's have fun. And then they can't even finish the pizza. I can't even do this. I need you. And it's right now. Me too. Baby. Baby. I like Chris better than any of the other males that we meet in this book. I think he's the most calm, the most trustworthy, but at the same time, he's still this weird bipolar dude who's like, I'm dangerous. He pulls like this Edward Cullen. Everybody's dangerous and I'm trying to protect you. But I'm the most dangerous. But then he can't stay awake from her. Because her blood sings to him. Like, I know he's not a vampire because this is set in the real world. So he scares me that he says stuff like that all the time. Like, I'm super dangerous. Okay. Well, if you said that to me, and uh, I don't think I'd come back over and over again. Over and over and over again. Like, he said it lots of times. And she's like, I'm not running. And I'm like... You know, I think you might want to. I think you might just want to second guess this judgment. So that was stressful just the whole time. I'm thinking like maybe Chris is going to stab her any second. You know, I feel like there's a murderer about because we don't know what happened to Rebecca. And it just like really feels like she's dead. At one point, I actually theorized that Ava was Rebecca. <laughs> she like changed her name and got plastic surgery. I feel like someone has to be... Rebecca or else Rebecca's there's dead. Just, there's so much passion lusty scenes. For me, it just feels like there's no foundation for their relationship. Like it's just lust. I want to see them bond and have some cutesy dates. I think my favorite part of the book was their little date at the Mexican restaurant. The fiery taco and she just like ate it and they kind of had a little bit of banter that was cute. And he was like, please pose for me. And I was like, oh, is he gonna draw you like one of his French girls? But there was no Titanic scene. I kind of wanted that. He did draw her like one of his French girls. But it, it, she wasn't there when he was drawing it. So it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I did really like also when he had that first drawing of her from the coffee shop. Anyway, I'd love to hear your general thoughts on the book and who you think the dude is and your theories about Rebecca. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.